Hi, it's Jeff Chalmers here from discoverablebase.com. Thanks for joining me in another video, and this one is a bit special because it's the first of a new series called Ask Jeff and Lauren, where we answer your double bass related questions. And I'm joined today by a wonderful bass player and teacher, Lauren Pierce. So thanks for joining me today, Lauren. Thanks for having me. Well, if you want to learn more about Lauren uh, and hear her play, check out some of her lessons. She's got a great website called uh, laurenpiercebasslessons.com, which you can go and visit. Now, this show is going to work, um, the way this show is going to work is that we're going to answer your questions. So if you have something that you really you know, want an answer on, you can ask us that question by leaving a comment below this video. So we'll get stuck into the first one straight away from Jeff, uh, another Jeff, not me. Uh, and he asks, Jeff, I've got a quick question for you. I'm an electric bass guitar player and I'm starting to learn the upright bass. I found a really nice bass to purchase from a local luthier and he's throwing in a bow in a case. Should I ask him for a French or German bow, bearing in mind that I'm a beginner? So Jeff's new to the instrument, Lauren. He doesn't have a background to draw upon. He doesn't have any kind of personal preference. He's probably never even held a double bass bow before. Mm -hmm. What do you think he should go for? Well... You know, some people say that there are different advantages and disadvantages to each one. I think either one is going to have the same amount of challenges and the same amount of difficulties. You know, it's just they're going to be different. For French bow, you know, I think a lot of people like to use French bow when they're playing solo music, um, when they're playing something a little bit um, lighter, like chamber music. But you absolutely can use it when you're playing in an orchestral setting or whatever. For German bow, it's a little bit, um, I don't want to say rougher, but a little bit heavier. So mm. it's really, really good for orchestral playing. But you can also use it for the same things, for chamber music and for solo music. So really, I think you can choose either one and have good success. But what I would recommend is look and see what most people play around your area. Mm. And the reason for that is if you ever did want to start taking lessons, if you're not already, then you can find a teacher that's most likely going to play with that with that style of bow. Um, and I, I really do recommend that when you're a beginner because when you're starting with the bow, it's such a bear, you know, that mm -hmm. you really need someone to help you out. And if you have someone that specializes in that bow holds, then it's really going to help. Yeah, I, I think even if you did have the opportunity to play both, and you'd be so far at the beginning of the journey that you probably wouldn't be able to make an informed choice about what you like yeah. anyway. I mean, I really to echo your comments, I think that, that the main thing is that you just kind of get started with whatever you go for. Both of them have their challenges. Um, yeah. And there are these kind of sort of stereotypes. Um, I had a, a great teacher called Georgie Sinsiewski, uh, and he said to me that a German bow is no a French bow is a cup of tea and a German bow is a mug of tea and uh, <laughs> that was his explanation and in Love a way that. it kind of makes a lot of sense to me it does yeah it does. And, yeah. and anything that uses tea of course being a Brit I appreciate so yeah, um <laughs> yeah I, I mean I I play German Lauren plays French and you will find examples of wonderful bass players you know who are really expressive doing all sorts of things on, on the different bows and I think mm -hmm. it's probably easier to use more weight and a heavier sound in a German bow perhaps mm -hmm. and maybe it's easy to play light uh, with right, a right. French bow but you'll always find people doing that on on either one yeah. I think as you get started Lauren's point about finding people in your area playing the same bow is key because anyone who's starting out on the double bass should get a teach uh, a lesson from a teacher face to face at some point yeah um yeah. And if they play French bow, uh, then I would go for that. And if they play German, um, then I would go for that. Right. Um, yeah, and I, I think the other thing is that you'll tend to find more French bow players out there. I, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure what the uh, the split is, but certainly in the UK, um, there are more French bow players than there are German, mm -hmm. even though there are a lot of German bow, uh, bow players like myself. What do you think about the split in the US, Lauren? Do you think it's, what kind of percentage yeah. do you think it would be? It's really hard to say, isn't it? Yeah, I was just thinking about that, and I I could be wrong, but I feel like it's pretty even now. You know, mm. I think maybe at one point there was a little bit more of uh, French bow players, but um, now I I I tend to see just as many German bow players as I do French bow players, and so because of that, you know, it's good for you to find a teacher that plays that style of bow. But if you can't, and you're just dead set mm. on playing, say German bow, and everybody around you plays French bow. You know, a lot of the a lot of the teachers are also trained on the other bow hold, so it's not the mm. end of the world. And the reason yeah, I say that true. is because you might start on, say, French bow, and then decide later that German bow works much better for you. So just start 
with something and you know just to finish off lauren do you have this problem because you know in the same way that whenever you see somebody using the strings that you really love and or you like the sound of and you think oh maybe i'll just go get those strings yeah i've been watching uh your videos of playing french bow (laughs) and a lot of other people you know john Mm -hmm. palatich and what have you and I keep thinking about trying French bow, but I've played German for years. So yeah. I know it would be a really crazy journey if I did no, it. No, you know. I don't think it would, though. Honestly, yeah. I've known several people that have switched over time and they sound great. You know, yeah. I think honestly, when you start something later in mm. life, um, after doing another thing for a while, yeah. it's a little bit easier because you know how to learn things. So, yeah, you know, that's true. I, I don't think it's a. So, all that's to say, don't feel like this is like a huge commitment. Just choose whichever one you feel is best for you. Absolutely. And you know what? That's a great point. We'll finish it there, Lauren. And listen, I just wanted to, first of all, well, thank you, Lauren, for coming down and joining me today. It's been great having you here. And of course, thank everybody for watching this video. And if you have a question, if you have a comment to follow on and join this discussion, please post it uh, below this video. And we'll see you next time.